Hello. Okay, so we're starting a new read aloud today, a new book. Really hope you enjoy it. Oh. It is called Ruby and the Booker Boys by Derek Barnes. And this is actually a series. We're just going to read the first book. And hopefully, if you like it, you can check out the next three. Um, this one is called Brand New School, Brave New Ruby. And it's illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Okay, so Ruby's laptop journal here. Here's the deal. I'm about to start third grade at Hope Road Academy where my three older brothers rule. Will the Booker boys shine so bright I'll get lost in their light? Or will their extra superstarness help me fit in? To get a chunk of stardom, I'll have to show everyone that Ruby is her own Booker. As soon as I set foot in that new school, it's showtime. RB for Ruby Booker. Chapter one, rise, shimmy and shine. I woke up at 7.15 in the morning. The first day of school was really real when my clock radio went off at 7.30. Ma had fixed it the night before to play my favorite song, Cotton Candy Clouds, a let's get going and have a good first day of school song. The coolest group in the world, the Crazy Cutie Crew, sings that song. They only have three members, but I like to pretend I'm the fourth. As soon as the first note hit my ears, I stood up on my bed like it was a stage, even though Ma doesn't like me to. I sang every single word really loud as if the Crazy Cutie Crew wrote that song for me. When the sun hits the clouds and rainbows kiss the sky, a sweet wind blows, and then I know that today is mine, all mine. <laughs> this is pretty much how I begin each morning. I sing so loud, the rest of my family uses me as an alarm clock. I leaped onto the floor and hit a perfect landing on my super soft rug. It looks like big piano keys, but instead of the keys being boring black and white, they are purple and orange. Cotton candy clouds was bouncing off every wall in my room when I slid over to my window. I pulled back my curtains and got the biggest hug from the sun. Those morning rays covered my face with a color that's hard to find in a crayon box. If happy was a color, I guess that's what I would call it. Before I knew it, I heard someone coming down the hall outside my bedroom door. It was Ma and my three big brothers, Ro, Ty, and Marcellus. When they got to my room, they were all rubbing their eyes and yawning. From the smell of sausages and eggs floating into my room, I could tell that Daddy was downstairs making breakfast. We hear you, Ruby, loud and clear, baby, loud and clear, Ma said with her big, pretty smile. She picked me up and squeezed me real warm and tight, just like she does every morning. Girl, do you know how early it is? Are you part girl, part rooster? Ro asked angrily. You sure do crow loudly. Yeah, Ladybug, my biggest brother Marcellus added. He calls me Ladybug. I like it. That name fits me because I'm cute and I like to think that I bring good luck wherever I go. We all love your singing, Ruby, and we're used to it, but this is extra, extra early. What else do you all expect? That's Rube. It's what she does, my third brother Ty said with a grin. He took his glasses out of his pocket, out of the pocket of his pajama top, popped them on his button nose, and then said, Good morning, Rube. Sounds like you're ready for school. He always says nice things to me. I love me some Ty. Okay, boys, leave your sister alone. Let's get ready and head downstairs for breakfast, Ma said, pointing down the hallway towards the boys' room. And you, Miss Superstar Third Grader, you said you wanted to pick out your own outfit this morning, so get to it, sister. Ma poked my belly. She loves tickling me. As far as my clothes go, orange and purple rule. Before I went to bed, I hung my first day of school outfit over the chair at my desk. It was a brand new orange and purple shirt, a brand new jean jumper, long orange and purple striped socks, and to top things off, my favorite shoe combination, one orange sneaker and one purple. I couldn't wait to put everything on to show Ma. After washing up, brushing my teeth, and putting on my purple and orange perfection, I grabbed two bracelets, purple and orange, of course, and I put on my favorite pretend pearl earrings. 
Then I pressed repeat on my radio alarm clock and sang cotton candy clouds even louder. I heard Rose screaming down the hallway, give us a break, Ruby. I love to get on his nerves. As I looked in the mirror for the last time, I whispered to myself, Ruby Marigold Booker, you sure are fabulous. And that's the truth. To add a final touch to my fabulousness, I reached for the new book bag Ma, for the new book bag Ma gave me, made me. Ma can work wonders on her sewing machine, and this time she outdid herself. She so sewed me a school bag in the shape of a guitar. I want to be a rock star when I grow up, so this new book bag was very special to me. But there was only one problem. I couldn't grab it and go downstairs for breakfast. Lady Love was sitting on my bed and chomping on the straps. I forgot to mention that I have a pet and not just any pet. Lady Love is my two-year-old extra super spoiled iguana. There she sat looking super girly wearing her fake diamond leash and hot pink nail polish on her claws. Lady Love is a real diva. I sure love her. That's how she got her name, Lady Love. I tickled Lady Love's belly and offered her some iguana snack food. That was all it took. She moved off my book bag. I picked it up quickly, took a deep breath and ran out the door of my bedroom. When I turned the corner to head down the stairs, I bumped into Ma. Great look girl, nobody can make mismatched shoes look as fabulous as you, Ruby. Ma gave me her pretty smile again. Do I look okay, Ma? Do I? I'm so ready for school. Third grade, here I come. I was excited about my first day at a new school, but I don't think I was really ready. Deep down inside, my tummy was turning. Ma said, looks like you wore your headscarf to bed. Your hair still looks nice. Good, your shoes are tied, pretty bracelets, your book bag looks full and it has all your supplies in it, right? Ma gave me one last look. Yes, Ma, yes, I gotta get down for breakfast. Don't wanna start my first day at Hope Road Academy on an empty tummy. I hopped on the handrail and was about to slide down the stairs like my brother always do. My brothers always do, but of course, Ma stopped me. Girl, are you forgetting you have a skirt on? She said with, the look that, with that look on her face. Everybody knows that look. It says, you should know better. I hopped off the banister and yelled out to daddy and my brothers, here comes Ruby. And that's where we'll stop for today. See you tomorrow.